And I believe this church is a church of the spirit, so we should do it as led as a spirit. As we have been led as before I, I go into today's message, please let us follow God's agenda. I want to believe there is nobody here that will go late to class. It is becoming too much. Please let we the church starts 10:15. Let us make it on time. Amen. It has been laid upon my heart this morning to preach on faith. Let's have a seat. Amen. So I don't just want you to lose me, just follow me. See, there is no topic that can be over. Uh, you cannot overemphasize the topic of faith. Because without faith, a believer is useless to the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray that you will grant me all chance that none of my words will be said here today, but only your words, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things that are not seen. Faith is a substance, and it is an evidence. But the Bible said it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. I want to make a correction here today. Faith is not your belief. Faith is greater than your belief. Faith is a conviction. What is a conviction? A conviction is a strong belief. It's like a grip. Although it is not there, you can feel it. Although it, you cannot see it, you are seeing it. So faith is all of the way spiritual. And we cannot neglect faith because Bible said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means for you to walk hand in hand with God and the Holy Spirit, you must have faith. And faith is more than your belief because faith has to do with action. On your strong conviction. So for you to act in faith, that means you must have seen something that is not seen. You must have felt something that is not felt. You must have experienced something that is not yet experienced. Because it is a substance. That is why the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Because it is spiritual. It is not sensual. It is not something you can touch. But believers touch it. They feel it. And the Bible said, by this faith, the elders obtained a good report. And the Bible said again that this faith also is what God used to create the world. Follow me here. That means faith itself is the operation of God. So for you to operate in faith, you must have seen something that is not yet seen. You must have felt something that is not yet felt. You are rich. The Bible said you are rich. The Holy Spirit has ministered it to you that you are rich. You've seen it. You've felt it. It's so real to you. There is zero uh, uh, dollar in your hands. But you are acting as a rich man. That's faith. Because you are feeling something that is not yet visible. 
It is not fake. It is real. But you are yet to see it. Now, faith is acting on what you have seen and you have heard and you have felt. How do I know? The Bible said in the book of Genesis that God created things. And in the New Testament, the Bible said God called them out. Things that were not as though they were. How do you call out things that were not as though they were? This phone has never existed. And I want to call it out as if it has existed. That means I've seen this phone somewhere. For me to call out this phone out exactly the way I want it to be, that means I've experienced it somewhere. But it is the realm that is not yet seen. So I want to make it visible. So I'm not going to be calling out a black phone because my phone is white. I'm not going to be calling out an iPhone because it is red me. So I'm calling out exactly what I've seen and felt. So after the creation in Genesis, the Bible said God looked back on what he had created and he said it was good. How did God know that it was good? That means God was comparing it with another entity. He has conceived it inside his tummy. He has seen it somewhere in his heart. So when the thing came out into the realms of physical, he compared it and said, okay, this is what I saw. So this is good. So when you are walking by faith, you are walking by the utterances of God. You are walking by the word of God that he has conceived in you. It is not just a belief. It is a conviction. It is so strong inside of you. The Bible said the elders obtained what? A good report. Mercy, brother. The book of, of Joshua chapter 1. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night so that you will obtain a good success. God created and saw that what he, he, he created was good. That's one. Joshua, you shall obtain a good report. In book of Hebrews, the elders obtain a good report. That means there is a good, good, good in the operation of faith. Because there is always a comparison be- between the things that are not seen and the things that are being seen. So if there is a good report and there is a good success, that means there is a bad one. So how do you compare between the good and the bad? That's how we come back. That's why we come back to that scripture that says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. No, without faith, you cannot do exploits. No, without faith, you cannot make things happen. But he said, without faith, it is impossible for you to please God. That means for you to please God, you must do it his way. For you to please God, you must operate his way. For you to please God, you must hear God's word. The elders obtained a good report. And what is faith? Is a substance of things hoped for. Is the evidence of things that are not seen. You've not seen it, but you are so convinced. You are so convinced. You have to move from the place of belief into the realm of faith. And this is the reason why I'm saying it. Because when trials and tribulations come, they will affect your belief. But when you move into the realm of faith, there is a conviction. There's nothing that can happen to you right now that will make you doubt whether you are a female or you are a male. Be it that you failed your exam, be it that something happened to you, maybe something something happened to your account, maybe maybe you had an accident, God forbid. It will not make you doubt that I am a guy and you are a lady because it is a conviction. It has left the realm of belief. I am sure. So this is what God is saying. He said, it is an evidence. He says, although it is not seen, I am sure of it. Although I am not feeling it right now, I have felt it somewhere. So for you to 
walk in the realm of faith, you must all the way be spiritual. Because it is the realm of God, and God is a spirit. Faith is a substance. That means I can touch it, but it is not yet physical. I can relate with it, but I'm not yet seeing it. But it's a substance. It's so strong. It's undeniable. And by this, the elders, the Bible said they obtained a good report. And that is why faith. Jim said, the trying of your faith, it works with patience. For you to know, for, for me to know that you actually have faith in this thing. That means I must try it with your patience. If God has spoken to you that you are rich and you say you believe, you want to know that it, is, it has left the realm of belief and you've entered into the realm of faith, God will try you with patience. And things will keep on coming. Keep, things will keep on coming. And they will be telling you the direct opposite of that. We use time. This thing, I'm convicted. I'm so sure. That is when you will know that you are actually faithful. They did everything to the apostles. Don't preach in this name again. Don't perform signs and wonders in this name. But oh, they are con- they, they are dead. They are dead to themselves. You, no wonder Paul said, "He said this life that I live." He said, I've been crucified with Christ. He said, and nevertheless, I live. He said, but this new life I live is no longer my life. He said, but it is the life of God. It is the life of faith. It is the life of he that died and rose up for me. It's no longer about my senses. Sometimes I, my heart breaks. How people contend with the word of God, with your logic. You want to understand the, the word of God. Have you forgotten what the Bible said in the book of Revelation? He said, no. He said, you cannot be lukewarm. You cannot want to be hot and be cold. He said, if you want to be cold, be cold. If you want to be hot, be hot. You cannot be the two together. If you want to be logical, be complete in your logic. And if you want to follow the word of God, be complete in the following of the word of God. You cannot be two. The Bible said the truth is one. A man of God said, in my heart, he said, but don't contend with it. He said, the truth might hurt you. He said, but don't fight it. Because it is the truth. So you have two options. Either to follow the truth or not to follow the truth. You have two options, either to live your life for Christ or not live it for Christ. Don't confuse us. Today you are this, tomorrow you are that. What exactly are you? He said, this is the life I've called you to live. It's a life of faith. So that you get to the stage and to the level whereby you completely surrender your will to God's will. That God, okay, I've been believing this thing for 15 years. This is what I was taught. This was what my teachers taught me. This was what my parents taught me. But one day you encountered a word in the Bible. It was completely, it is completely against what you believe. And you let go of your 15 years of belief and follow God's word. He said, the truth my heart. He said, but don't fight it though. It's my heart, but don't fight it. That is the truth. We have to get to that level whereby what you've believed for so many years do not contend with God's word. That when you meet God's word and it jumps your belief, it's contradicting to your belief. You give way for the, for the word of God to have expression. That although I believe things this way, although I see things this way, but God, if this is how you see it, then let it be your way. He said you cannot be lukewarm. If you want to be carnal, let everybody know that you are carnal. If you want to be spiritual, be spiritual. For the work of faith is a complete spiritual work.
is an evidence of things not seen. The, the, the disciples went about preaching Jesus. He's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. They have the evidence that he's coming back soon. But they've not seen him descend from heaven. Up to now, ministers are still preaching. Jesus said he's coming. He's coming back soon. Many of us believe that and we, we have not enter, yet entered into the evidence of it. That Jesus is coming back soon. And so many words that God has decreed over your life. You only believe it. You don't have faith in it. Because faith is an action. I hear it. And I hear it again. So the Bible said, it says, so faith comes by what? By hearing. By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. For for you to enter into the realm of faith and live the realm of belief itself, you have to keep on hearing it. You have to keep on hearing it. I cannot jump Aziz today and say, "Ah, Aziz, do you know that your name is not Azizo? You were actually named maybe Alexis. And as he sits down and he's like, oh, come to think of it though. I'm actually not sure. But this is actually what people have been, you are still in the realm of being, because that's impossible. Because his parents named him Aziz. His friends call him Aziz. He's been hearing Aziz since the day he was born. He is convicted. You cannot change his mind. Even when you wipe all of his identity, that thing is still inside of him. Let him change his environment and everybody start calling him Alexis. He has an evidence that no, my name is Aziz. This is who I am. Has your belief gotten to that stage? Stop contending with the word of God. Stop trying to make the word of God fit into your thinking. Stop twisting the word of God. Because you want the word of God to fit into your belief, you read seven translations of the Bible. You went to Google. You you just want it to be what you believe. Meanwhile, the word of God is straight. The Bible says, run away from idolatry, run away from fornication, but you are now twisting it, twisting it, twisting it, so that it will come into your own perspective. He says, stop it. If you want to walk in sin, walk in sin. If you want to walk with God, walk with God. Don't contain it. Don't twist it. The only thing that can be twisted is you. The word of God stands sure. Jesus said, Surely I say unto you, he said, heaven and earth will pass. He said, for one, not one jot of my word will go. And this word of God is so sure, they've been using it since ages, and they are getting reports. The Bible said they are not just getting reports, they are getting good reports. So which report are you getting? Because let me tell you, if you are not acting on God's word and you are getting reports, there is no two way to it, you are getting a bad report. And the Bible said, time we tell you. Many of us here, we are above 20. So, let me just say, maybe our life expectancy is what? Maybe 70 years more. If you want to live more than 100 years, let's say 80 years more. He said, but what you are, what you are building on, what God wants you to build on, is something that will last you for eternity. So when you are running Elter Skater to build an empire for yourself, God is telling you that what I am trying to let you build is something that will last you for eternity. No wonder the book of Revelation says some believers will weep. He said, but Jesus will wipe away their tears, their tears because later they will not discover that all of their life was in vanity. And what shall they profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
you have many companies, you are rich, people reference you. Say, but eternity with them. Not everybody will see Jesus face to face. Some people will see him from afar. God is just. Say, whatsoever man sows, so shall he reap, because he cannot be mocked. What you sow now, you will reap it. God cannot be mocked. There is a reward for obedience. I cannot be obeying God and you are not obeying his ordinances and then we'll get the, the same reward. No. He said, I'm a just God. Bow your heads and pray. Say, Lord, help me to obey your word. Help me to live the life of faith. In the name of Jesus. Help me to live the life of faith. Ancient words ever true. Changing me. Changing